365 days a year and 366 on leap year. Do you understand? The transcendent life for certain schools of thought is very different from what I, what I have to share with you. I know that there are people uh, who have a philosophy of transcendency that's based on thought or continuous repetition of certain words, some incantation of some kind or the mantra. I know there are those who believe it comes through certain kinds of intuition, but that's all very different from what I'm talking about. You have those on the other side who absolutely believe that there is nothing like a special kind of life that's spiritual because they believe in empiricism. Today, sadly, there are many who are into empirical Christianity. We've come to a place in our lives on earth where many don't understand what it is to be a Christian. To be a Christian is more than believing that there's a God in heaven and you pray to him through Jesus Christ. Like I've shared many times, we were not asked to pray through Jesus Christ. The Bible doesn't say we should pray through Jesus Christ. God never told us to pray through Jesus Christ. He said to us to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a big difference between praying through Jesus Christ and praying in the name of Jesus. Many pray and say, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That is not a prayer. You pray in the name of Jesus. To pray through Jesus is to make him a medium. To pray in the name of Jesus is to exercise the power of attorney that he has given to you. There's a big difference between the two. 
One is a demonstration of unbelief. The other one is real Christianity. We live in his name. We pray in his name. The Bible says, whatever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the way to live a supernatural life. You function in the name of Jesus. That's Christianity. You live in the name, in the name, in the name. That means you're, you're living for him. In his authority. How could you be defeated if you live for him? Defeat is not possible. Failure is not possible. Poverty is not possible. We're called to live in the name of Jesus. In the name of the creator of the world. That's big. Tell somebody that's big. I think that's really big. I can consider, conceive of anything that can compare with it. Living in the name of Jesus. Let me hear you call that name Jesus. Can you call it? It's a wonderful name, praise God. An excellent name. The matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, so when you live like that, if you had a tumor in your body, all you had to do was to say, Tumor, in the name of Jesus, you cannot stay in this body. I command you to quit. And it'll go. If you had a problem with your heart, you say, Heart, I command you to function normally in the name of Jesus. And it will change and function normally. If you had a child that wasn't growing right, you lay your hands on the child and say, Child, you grow right in the name of Jesus. And that will be it. What a life. Hallelujah. If you had, if you had trouble at work, if you had trouble at work, you had problems with your job, you walk into your office and you lift your hands in the presence of the Lord and say, I command peace in the name of Jesus. I command the calmness in the name of Jesus. I command the storms in my office to calm in the name of Jesus. And that'll be it. If you were in a predicament, if you found yourself in a challenging situation, you declare, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the wisdom to function here. I have the wisdom to operate here. I have the wisdom to answer questions and solve problems. I have the wisdom to walk here. Praise God. And you know what? You will do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, for the right purpose for everybody. I'm talking about the transcendent life in Christ. Tell somebody there's a higher life. <laughs> higher than the ordinary. There's a higher life. Something I want to mention to you. The Bible tells us that God gives every one of us according to he gives us responsibilities according to the abilities that he has given us. Is that right? No matter what you do, there's an ability that's working in you. And you will never be able to do beyond that ability. You can't do more than you can do. Like somebody said, all you can do is all you can do. There are people who have an ability to run a business that handles money in multiplied millions. Some have an ability to run a business 
that's into some hundreds of thousands. For some other people, a few thousands. Yet for some others, a few hundreds. Even if you put them as the put them on top of central bank to sit on all the money, all they can do is all they can do. Now, what does God do for you when he wants to upgrade your life? He increases your ability. That's what he does. He increases your ability. There are people who can only run a family, uh, their own biological family. Outside of that, they, they can't lead anybody else. There are those who can, who, can, who can run a whole city. There are those who can run a whole nation. And in spite of that, nations are of different sizes, of different greatness. So it depends on the ability that God gives to you. During this program, one of the things the Spirit of God is going to do for many of you is to increase your ability. When God increases your ability, suddenly you will discover that you are able to do more than you used to do. You become more efficient. The same efforts you used to make would now produce more results. That's what we're talking about. You're not necessarily going to apply more force. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So th that's something that I believe by the time we're through with this series of meetings, you will notice in your life that there is an increased ability. Hallelujah. Point number one. In recognizing the transcendent life that we have in Christ, the first thing you need to know is that we are alive to God. Now, this is wonderful. You may not know how big that is, but let me begin to explain. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 11, the Bible says, Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alive unto God. It says, recognize that you are alive unto God. If you're born again, you're alive to God. That's what it means. When you're born again, you're alive to God. Someone who's not born again is not alive to God. You remember the statement Jesus made, let the dead bury their dead? He said, let the dead bury their dead. What do you mean by that? Those who were spiritually dead was the ones he was referring to. He said, let the dead bury their dead. They were not alive to God. But when you're born again, you are awakened to the fatherhood of God. You are awakened to the reality of the spirit realm. You are awakened to the reality of God. You are awakened to the reality of the Holy Spirit. You are awakened to the efficacy of the word of God. Suddenly you recognize Jesus Christ, not only as Lord of your life, as one in whom you have found a rich and deep fellowship. The Bible says, that our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. He has brought us, God has brought us into a fellowship with His Son, Jesus. Say this with me. I'm alive to God. One more time. I'm alive to God. 
Now you know what that means? It means also that you become awakened to the realm that God lives in. The realm in which God functions. That becomes your realm of life. When you are alive to God, it means that you are alive to a realm that's beyond this world. Wow. Oh, that's powerful. When you read in the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel, from verse 14 into verse 16, you find some beautiful words of Jesus in his prayer to the Father talking about us. He said that we are not of this world. He made it clear. He said, he said to the Father that we are not of this world, even as He is not of this world. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I am not of this world. I cannot think like those of this world. I will not think like those of this world. I am not of this world. Now, there's something Jesus said in St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. When you read from verse 18 to verse 21, he said about the same thing here. Then he said, I have chosen you out of the world. Praise God. He said, marvel not if the world hates you. He chose you out of the world. Say this, Jesus chose me out of the world. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I belong to another life. I belong to a higher life. I belong to a higher realm. I don't belong here. I have a higher life. I live a higher life. I don't belong here. Oh, imagine if this becomes, imagine if this becomes your present hour consciousness. Imagine if this becomes your mindset. Imagine if this controls everything that you do. I don't belong here. I live a higher life. I live on the mountain top. So I look at the world from the mountain top. That's the way I live every day. I, I live from the mountain top. I look at the world from another realm. I don't think like this world. I cannot think like this world. I left that realm of thinking a long, long time ago. I belong to a higher realm. Glory to God. You know, it, it, what John said in first epistle of St. John chapter 4 and verse 4, he said, ye are of God, little children. Ye are of God. That means you hail from God. Your origin is in God. He says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. He didn't say you shall overcome them. He didn't say if you pray enough, you will overcome them. You know, some people talk about demons. They say demons are troubling them. All the time they're thinking about what to do about demons. They said there are demons that have invaded the territory. We don't know what to do. They're territorial demons. So they're praying against the territorial demons. Oh, territorial demons, they call them. And they say, go from here, territorial demons. What do you mean territorial demons? Not where we are. When I come into a territory, I take over. Are you listening? The Bible says in the 49th chapter of the book of Isaiah, when you study in the 9th verse, you read from the 7th verse to the 8th verse and to the 9th verse. 
he tells us to reassign the world's desolate heritages. To reassign them. So when I walk in, if there had been a territorial principality of evil, when I walk in, he takes his hands off. And then I declare that an angel of God will take over that place. You know, some years ago, some Christians used to have uh, stickers. Um, I used to see those stickers on cars uh, reading, He reigns. You remember those stickers? Did you ever see them? I always felt something was wrong. You know, I always felt something was wrong with that mentality. You know, the, the stickers, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns. It's not true. It's not true. The only way he reigns is if I do so. He reigns through me. He doesn't reign on earth. I reign in his name. Do you understand? Okay, you got it. Now, those stickers ought to have read, We reign. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you see, the Bible says he must reign till his enemies have been made his footstool. He must reign till his enemies have been made his footstool. Do you understand what that is? His enemies must become his footstool. That means that he must have his feet on his enemies. Where are his feet? Jesus Christ is the head of the body. The feet are part of the body. So it's the body of Christ that must triumph over the enemies of Christ. Come on, shout amen, somebody. These are not religious cliches. These are real thoughts that must control your thinking every day. Until they become your consciousness, you will not live in them. You know, a lot of times Christians make songs, beautiful songs. They sing them, but they don't walk them. And yet the Bible says, walk out your own salvation with godly reverence. He says to walk it out. God's not going to work it out for you. You're the one to work out the triumphant life in Christ. He has given it to you. You've got to put it to work. You've got to live it out every day. Hallelujah. Say this with me. My spirit is alive to God. I've got the light of God shining in my, my spirit. i got the word of God Working in my spirit. I'm alive to God. Now here's what I'm going to tell you to do. You're going to say this again and again until tomorrow's meeting. Are you listening to me? Every time you get the chance to be alone, you say to yourself, I'm alive to God. I'm alive to God. I'm alive to God. Now, you'd be amazed what will happen in less than 24 hours. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. When you say this, I'm alive to God. You would find that the, the pressures of this world, the concerns of this world will begin to recede. And the consciousness of the victory of Christ the consciousness of his power, the consciousness of his glory, the consciousness of his love, of his grace, would increase in your life. You become more conscious of the dominion of the Spirit of God in your life. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hallelujah. I'm alive to God. I'm alive to God. Put your hand over your chest and say, I'm alive to God. 
I'm alive to God. Now, let's take a little test here. If you came in here with a heart condition, all right? If you came in here with a heart condition, just put your hand over your chest region as I, I say the same words, okay? Now, say, I'm alive to God. I'm alive to God. I got the life of God in me. Because I'm alive to God. I'm alive to God's healing power. I'm alive to God's health. Working in me. Working in me. I'm alive to God. Now, listen. When you are alive to God, you can easily hear the Spirit of God talk to you. Because, you see, you are alive to His realm of life. You are alive to the way He functions and where He functions from. You see that? It's another way of saying, I'm tuned in to God. You see that? I'm tuned in to God. When you're tuned in to Him and alive to Him, you are alive to His wisdom. You see that? You are alive to His wisdom. You are alive to His instructions. You are alive to His guidance. When everybody else is going this way, and God doesn't want you to go this way, there will be a knowing in your spirits, a guidance in your spirits that makes you go the right way when everybody else goes that way. Can you grasp this? I'm alive to God. Wow. Whoo, boy. Number two. He is alive in me. He's alive in me. I like this. I like this. Let me give you a scripture. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I want you to read from verse 26 into verse 27. Can you do that quickly? Colossians chapter 1 from verse 26. Read it into verse 27. One, two, go. Did you see that? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's one good one. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Want to go. Did you see that? What does it say? That you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you. Say this with me. He lives in me. <laughs> One more time. He lives in me. Oh my goodness, this is powerful. He lives in me. Now, if he lives in you, we're not talking about some, some imagination. Do you understand? This is not a fable. This is reality. The Spirit of God is the conveyor of the presence of God. The Spirit of God is the conveyor of the blessings of God. The Spirit of God is the conveyor of all that has been given to us in Christ Jesus. He carries all of those blessings. The Spirit of God. Now, the Bible says that Spirit lives in you. Understand this. The power of the Word of God works through knowledge and proclamation. If you don't know it, it will not work. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Even though it's been in the Bible, even though you have read it, if you don't have a consciousness of it, it will not work. 
Somebody said, the Bible says this. So why has this other thing happened to me? The Bible says this is not supposed to happen. Why did this happen? Because you didn't know what the Bible said in reality. Because you didn't know that you didn't have that consciousness of the Word of God in your spirit. Because if you had the consciousness of that Word in your spirit, then your heart will be full of it. Your heart will be dominated by that Word. Then it will come out of your mouth every time you speak. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it is not the abundant thought in your heart, if it is not the dominating thought in your heart, you are not going to speak it out. And it is the speaking of it that perfects it. Are you still there? So he lives in me. Christ lives in me. One more time. Christ lives in me. He lives in my spirit. In my soul. And in my body. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Christ in me. The hope of health. Christ in me. The hope of strength. Christ in me. The hope of prosperity. Christ in me. The hope of excellence. Christ in me. Means glory in my life. Christ in me. Means progress in my life. Christ in me means strength in my life. Christ in me means I am well. I am sound. Hallelujah. Christ in me. Glory. Stand up on your feet. Christ in me. Hallelujah. Christ in me. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Christ in me. Christ in me. He lives in me. In every fiber of my being. In every bone of my body. In every cell of my blood. Christ lives in me. He is in my head. He is in my chest. He's in my hands. He's in my legs. He's in my feet. He's all over me. <laughs> the message you've just heard was produced by the Lovell Tape Ministry. For more information, Please contact Lovell Tape Ministry, post office number 13563, email address cec at christembassy.org or better still, you can find us on the web www.christembassy.org. God bless you.